So uh, it's always a bit uncomfortable to follow a showman like George, and, and this presentation uh, will not have as much images as this. It will be lots and lots of text, so I hope you bear with me. So try to lighten up the mood a little bit. I think I'd, uh, I'd figure I'd start this this uh, talk by getting undressed just just a little bit. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because when I I came here today, I, I, we have spent the whole day at, uh, with, with uh, George and a few others around here. Yeah, right. There we have one of them. Uh, so we came to spend the whole day at SoundCloud. So I, 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 got, I got this one. I'm very proud of it. I was hoping that it would say uh, something along the li lines So I went to SoundCloud's headquarters and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not. So, but I'm very proud of it, and I promised that I would wear it today. So, uh, so it's uh, this is a keeper. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I call central problems in the centralized system, and this is what we have been talking about today. So, this is a shorter version version of, of, of a talk I held earlier today. Um, it's where uh, how many here are have sort of a, a picture of, of the problems that are facing the music industry or, or think that they know something about it. I mean, I have heard about it. Mm, yeah, uh, quite a few, quite a few. So the main problem that uh, we are facing is related to, to the rights, related to the music. And, it, and it's a mess, and it's due to historical reasons. I'm not going to go into an explanation about it because it's going to take two hours. Uh, but it's the problem is that we don't know who has the rights to the music that we play. And that we are facing a lot of liabilities, especially in the US. Thank you, George, for, George, for your legal system. <laughs> uh, Very proud. <laughs> um, so, so, so this is causing us a lot, a lot of troubles, and it's not only us. It's, it's artists, it's the writers, it's, the, it's every other DSP, and yeah, it's, there are a lot of problems related to it. So what we have talked about today is how can we create a solution to this problem. So this is the, the suggestion that we have been talking about today. This is the, the, the suggestion from our side that this is what should be created. An in industry shared rights management framework acting as the industry lingua franca, that is the common language of the industry, collectively governed rather than owned and done that, done that by the industry itself. And when you, um, when you look at this, the, the way that this, this, this solution is formulated, you, I mean, you, you, you of course start th thinking decentralized system, blockchains, collect 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 collectively governed, sorry. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the problems that I see with these type of decentralized systems. So, let's see what we have. I'm going to start to talk a little bit about open and closed systems, because that is, that is something that, I, that I'm, I'm quite concerned with. And I like to quote uh, Panos Panay, which is a colleague of, 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 uh, of George, about this. And he says that open beats closed any time. And, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that, that way of putting it, because I, I believe very much in that, that, uh, that saying. So what aspects of open versus closed are there? So these are three different aspects. There are, of course, a lot of other different aspects, but these are the ones that I, I sort of uh, uh, think are important and, and think that they should be considered. So we have data, openness with regards to data. We have openness with regards to system governance. And we have openness with regards to the development itself. I'm going to get to what, syst what I mean with syst system governance in a few slides, but... But let me just um, talk a little bit about these things. Uh, so, openness with regards to data. How can, uh, how can system data be read by system internal actors, system external actors? Uh, it could be a completely closed off system uh, where, where the system internal actors can only read uh, parts of it, but it can also be a completely open system. And how can system external actors interact with the system? And, and also, how can this data be managed? Is it fully open for editing, a la Wikipedia style? Or is, it, or is it completely closed off? Uh, and you could have a less or more granular right system. Um, system governance. Um, system governance really make the big decisions for the system. Um, 
So is is this system collectively managed in some form? Is it centralized? What type of governance model exists? There's a range of them. I'm going to talk a little bit about this after in a, in a short while. And, and, and how open to insight is this system governance model itself? You could actually be using a system that you don't really know how it's managed. So, so these, are, these are important aspects with regards to that. And development. So development can be closed off and only done by a private party or consortium parties, which is the closed model. And the other end of the spectrum is open source, open for participation by anyone and modified by anyone, which also makes you able to fork the system if you think that, that it's done in the wrong way. Um, yeah, possibly creating multiple development branches. It can also have uh, uh, a system where you only have a certain approved soft software that is allowed to actually c connect to this closed network. So that's, that's some aspects to consider when, when you think about open versus closed. And these are some important aspects, I think, where open systems wins <coughs> out, is that an actor can pull out of a collaboration uh, within the system, make an uptake the system with them in the process, and if the date of the system is open, it makes it even harder. In, in practical terms, this means that it's more difficult to hijack the system. Uh, open system also enables shared and decentra decentralized verification of the state of the system. Conflicts will be resolved once and for all in one place, at least if you have some sort of a central but, uh, system <coughs> with decentralized governance. Network, network effects of, of open systems are much, much stronger, at least from my perspective. And correctly set, set up, you will achieve a balance of power. It's a trias politica, if you've heard the term. Uh, is uh, an inspira could be an inspiration for these types of systems. And it's also less vulnerable for, uh, to attacks, especially from within. And if you have a bunch of, 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 of disparate actors within the mu mu uh, music industry, for example, that don't really trust each other, uh, these types of attacks could come from the inside in, in the way that someone says, no, we don't like the, thing, the, the way that things are turning out with this system. We want, to, we want to retract from it, we want to take the system away. And, and having it open from the beginning makes it make that much, much harder. So that's some, word, some words about um, open versus closed. I'm going to talk about two central problems with decentralized system. And who or where is the authority on IDs within the system? Because this is something that the music industry is very concerned with. We, we don't have a place where we can, we, we, we don't have the lingua franca, we, we don't have a common language to identify uh, a work, for example. How many here know, uh, know what I'm saying when I say a work? It's, it, it's, it's a composition. There are, there are, there, there are two sides to, uh, to a song, but let's, let's not go into, go into detail about that. It's just that we cannot identify these central concepts because we don't have the ideas of them. There are some suggested ideas, but but it's, it's, it's actually a very tricky pro problem. And two, what does the governance model look like? So let's start, in, let's start to talk a little bit uh, on identity. And there are two types of, top types of identity within a system. Identity of the central concepts, what I tend to refer to as the domain objects, and the, it's the identity of persons as well. And these things are slightly different, where there are slightly different problems with them. So if you go to the identity of, of central concepts, this is three types of identifiers. There's possibly that there are more. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. You can have the centrally planned identifier, you can have a uh, what's called a natural identifier, and you could have, this is the mouthful, three decentrally as assigned identifiers. And um, I'm going to give you an example of each of these three trees and, and talk a little bit about the problems with each of them. So, we have the song Dancing Queen by ABBA. This is an example of this is the centrally planned identifier. This, is, this you, that you see here, this is an ISWC. How many of you know what an ISWC is? Not too many of you. <laughs> I can see one from SoundCloud and one from Amazon. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a global identification number, uh, number for a work. This is centrally assigned by, author by an authority down in Switzerland. Uh, and, and, and handed out by so-called societies. In Germany, it's, it's Gemma in Sweden, it, it, it's uh, STIM, and there are lots of differences of these all, ac all, across, um, all across the world. Does anyone, oh, by the way, does anyone know which this uh, ISWC, which song this is? I, I well, you know. <laughs> Have a guess. 
It's in Korean. That's a good, that's a very good guess. This is the, this is the first uh, assigned identifier. <laughs> the second one is not listen to your heart. We talked about this today. What country? Let's say that it's listen to your heart by your accept. And from this you can deduct that, that Swedes had, had a pretty central place in, in actually creating this system. <laughs> um, the problem with this... You gotta pull up rock set, man. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, the problem with these is that, that they are centrally assigned. They don't exist for every work out there. <coughs> it's, it's an identifier that, that is um, it's, it's controlled by some party, which means that, that it's difficult to use, especially since it doesn't apply uniformly for, for, for all works. So, so you need some way to identify works as well. So this, is, this really doesn't cut it. Or you, you, go, you get, go some distance, but it really doesn't cut it. The other one is natural identifier, and this is, this is uh, one sort of a natural identifier here. So this is actually Dancing Queen by Andersson Stig Stigerik Leopold, Andersson Benny, Göran Bror, Ulvius Björn K, with the vowels removed and then just put it in on the string. So it, it's more or less, it, it, it's um, normalizing the text and just making a long string out of it. This, I, I, actually, this is a pretty good natural identifier. You may not believe it, but it, but it, it actually is. Um, the problem with this is that it's very, very hard to find natural identifiers. It's, it's, it's actually almost impossible, because um, this is how you identify a work. It's a title, and then you have the writers of the song. Uh, but the writers can change. They normally don't, but, eventually, but sometimes they do. And, and this is information that hard, hardens over time. So, it, so when, when, the, when a work comes to life, it might have other writers, and then, then, then it transform into something else. So using them to get to the na natural identifier is very difficult. And it's also actually very difficult to find a natural identifier at all. So, so it's, I wouldn't base any system on trying to use natural identifiers unless you really, really, really know what you're doing. Uh, so that sort of rules out the natural identifiers as well. And then we have what I call free decenter assigned identifiers. So we have Dancing Queen, Oh My God, Best of Song Ever, <laughs> with a bunch of random characters on the end. <laughs> and this is actually quite good. Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, well, it's actually quite good if you could guarantee that you don't have uh, duplicates or collisions. So anyone can assign whatever to, uh, to, to identify a work or a song. Uh, so it, it gets you a distance as well, but, but you, you, you have to manage the uh, collisions in, 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 a way, in some way. So none of these really cut it. So my idea or, or, or my, my conclusion to this is, and, and bear, bear with me, this may, may be a, a stretch, of, stretch of the mind, but I'm going to try to explain it to you. Identity is a point in space. It, it does not have any properties at all, it's just a point in space that you can connect attributes to that eventually identifies it. And that is sort of a self-referential -refer way to define it. But, but the, the thing is that you, you need to add, create for people a, a place, just, a, just, just a, a, an identity in space to which you can connect attributes. And if you have a central system, a blockchain system or whatever, then eventually as people add these properties or these attributes to it, you will actually arrive at, uh, at what, what you perceive to be a common identity of that work. So this is a tricky problem uh, that, that, we are, that, that we are thinking about quite, quite hard when, when we try to solve this. The other is identity of persons. And this is a much shorter conclusion that identity in a digital world and tying that identity to a real world person is a very difficult problem. If you're working with blockchain-like systems, or rather if you work with Bitcoin-like systems, where you have a proof-of-work system in the, uh, uh, that, that runs on, then it's almost impossible to, to tie real-world identity to, uh, to uh, someone. So to, to get industry acceptance for this type of system, all types of, of, of proof-of-work proof of systems, or really all types of systems where the central actors don't have control over what's in there, will be ruled out directly. So, like, uh, like it says here, to gain industry acceptance, the, syst the system must be controlled by system external appointed moderators. So, you have a number of, 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 of system governors that starts out adding information, 
and and c that, that could could um, identify other characters uh, actors that that enters the system. So moving on a little bit to governance models, this this is the second uh, problem that I consider to be quite difficult. Uh, there are lots of diff different governance models. I said I would explain what I mean with governance model. Governance model is really who takes the big decisions in the system, who has the right to manage data, how granular is the right system, these types of questions. And this, this is really the central question that you need to name to create some sort of a decentralized, collectively owned system. Because to, to get acceptance, all these things. I'm going to walk through a, a few type of governance models. So. There are, of course, lots of ways that you can govern a system. These, these are four. You could probably come up with four other ones, just, just randomly throwing up, throwing up ideas here. Uh, but these are four suggestions. You, we, you have the dictatorship, which is a privately owned database. You could have a consortia that is a private banking system, three banks collaborating together. It's very close, closely related to a dictatorship. It's just that you don't solely own, own the system. You have what I call governor competition, and that is really Bitcoin or Ethereum or other type of proof of work system. The one that expends the most resources gets to control the system. Uh, and this type of, of, of governance model is, like I said, it's completely ruled out for, for any type of system that should gain, if it should gain industry-wide acceptance. So trying to base uh, a system on, on, on the Ethereum blockchain and say, hey, we're going to put all the rights on the Ethereum blockchain, it's not going to work. So if you have those ideas, stop them now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have hierarchical as well, which is sort of vi Wikipedia. So I'm just going to walk through these, the pros and cons of these. So dictate which movie, by the way? Well, that's the, the last king of Ethiopia. Ethereum. Ethereum. <laughs> 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 oh, it's the last king was last king of Scotland. Yeah, but that's, that's quite right. That's quite right. Uh, so with the, 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 what, what, what are the pros for the dictatorship? You have full control over all aspects of the system. It can be made very efficient, transaction-wise. It can be adapted to special needs of one organization, so you can make it very effective. Uh, the cons of it is that, it to, uh, at least for the music industry, it will be difficult or impossible, impossible to get industry-wide buy-in. Um, the, the, the dictator could have an unwillingness to share information with other actors. And the, there is probably also system internal formers that uh, forces that want to keep this information private because we own it, and why should we share? So this is not really a good model. You have the consortium model, which is more or less a dictatorship model. It's just shared between a number of parties. Uh, the pros of this is that you have control of the most aspects of the system, and uh, and this this movie, this movie you know. Uh, uh, I know the scene. That's the American Buenos Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, there's no single entity that owns the system, so there's a pro as compared to the dictatorship model. Uh, identity of the actors in the system is well controlled. Uh, the reason I didn't, didn't have this one on dictatorship is because there are no other actors in the system, so you don't really need to identify them. And it probably has the highest chance of industry buy-in in, in the music industry, because the ba major actors really want a shared system, but they really want a shared system that they can control. Um, the cons of this is that it gives too much power to system governance, and the same goes as for dictatorship. You'd probably want to keep this information pri private. Why share it? It's mine. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, governor competition or bit the Bitcoin way of doing it. The pros of this is that no one owns it, really owns the system. It's difficult or impossible to take down. The cons are really big if you want to do a decentralized system that, that's supposed to be used in some industry. You cannot enforce, it's difficult to enforce real world law onto the system. We're talking about this, yes, it's not impossible, of course. You can, you can of course, apply real, real world law to, to a digital world as well, but you need to identify the actors, and that can be very difficult. It's very low possibility to tie system actors to real world counter counterparts. It's inefficient, lots of effort needed to keep the system in control, <coughs> and it's corruptible, so it's not possible to verify the data correctness. And then we have the fourth model. I'm almost done, by the way, so you don't have to sit much longer through this. Uh, the hierarchical version. You know this one as well? Ah, yeah, of course. <coughs> uh, the pros of this type of hierarchical, like say, Wikipedia, pyramid, where you 
where you uh, de delegate uh, the, the right to do things within the system, is that the pros of this is, is that it can allow for a large number of system actors. It has decentralized verification of the system state by independent, by independent actors, a thousand eyes on the problem. And the cons of it is that it usually, usually has one single entity at the top controlling this system. I've, I have a, a bunch of conclusions about this. I'm not going to bore you with it. But there are, I think, a solution to, to this problem, uh, the, the governor problem, is, is a sort of a combination model between what I've just shown you. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to bore you, bore you, bore you with that. We'll, we'll take that at some different time. So thank you very much for listening. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Well, anyway, the last point, the, one of the cons of the Bitcoin network is that it's like uh, corrupt, easy, corruptible, or something <coughs> like that. If you can elaborate a bit more, because I don't understand exactly what you mean there. Like, corruptible, not, pos not possible to verify data correctness. Mm. Yeah, when you talk about Bitcoin, uh, then, then you can, of course, say this system. Uh, that system cannot be corrupted, uh, or where it could be corrupted by someone taking control of the system by having 51% of, of, of the hashing right. power and then, and then completely uh, changing everything, or some things at least, excluding these transactions. So when it comes to Bitcoin, no, it's not corruptible as such. What I mean here is that, that, but, but that is, uh, Bitcoin is, is a self-contained system where you, it, it, it only lives in the digital world. Uh, whereas what I'm talking about here, data, data correctness, Rather, uh, rather it, it, then the data represents something in the real world. And, and, and that something in the real world is rights. They belong to someone. And, and, um, uh, and you, have, you, you cannot verify it because the system is run by anon some anonymous, an anonymous entity that spends uh, a bunch of money to, to try to, to, to change things. So, and this together with the fact that you cannot identify, it's very difficult to identify actors in the system makes it corruptible, if you so. Is that, a, is that an answer to your question? Yeah, well, no, I don't agree 100%, but I've well, said to well, think a bit about it's it. It's not corruptible in the sense of, of, of corrupt data uh, or, or, or corrupt transactions. The transactions... Oh, exploitation? Of, yes. Sorry? Are you talking about like co co exploitation of the code, like the, the theory? No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about... Um, you have rights for a certain set of songs. Okay. Uh, someone adds your songs to this to this data set. Oh, it's and garbage in. Oh, sorry. Like unverified garbage in. Yeah, Bad garbage in. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Garbage in. Exactly. Garbage in. Exactly. So it's not corruptible as in corrupted data. It's nothing. Nothing to do with that. It's. Uh, you're saying that correctness has different meanings here. There's correctness within the system, which is all that matters for Bitcoin, and there is no other notion of correctness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whereas in this way, it says there are two notions of correctness. Very good explanation. Thank you for helping me out of this <laughs> Yeah. I'll ask the same question that I asked George. So in, in Eric's beautiful vision of the world five years from now, how can some of these technologies, blockchain or otherwise, help um, music and you know, in other ways, including the disappearing part? But yeah, <coughs> what's your vision? I consider these types of, of, of changes, the, these type of technological shifts, or these type of... I, I, I almost envision them uh, as a natural force. So, so when the time is right, when, when, things, when the stars align, uh, um, things will just happen. And we are in a, in, in a state right now where things are happening. And, it, and it's going to happen much, much faster from now. So I think that in, in five years' time, I think that someone will have created this system that, I, that I'm describing or that I'm talking about, that, that we want to create. Someone will have created it, maybe not us. Uh, but someone will, and when they do, they're going to, to add all the information that they can find, as correct as possible, add it in there, throw it out, and say, here's, all the, here, here's the world's information. Because this is information is really sitting, you, you, you may not know this, but this is uh, information sitting behind locked doors right now. There are a lot of different actors that have different pieces of this information. And you can get to it, some here and some there, but it's not collected in one place. Someone will collect this scraping the web in, in, in some way, and then just put it on one big blockchain. And, and then the music industry will need to 
to act on this, take a stance on it. Is this something that we want? Don't we want it? Is, is, is it an unstoppable force? Uh, so I, I think that there's going to have happen a lot of things and I, uh, in the next coming five years. And a lot of things so that it will be related to blockchain technology. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Will the music industry itself kind of disrupt itself with blockchain or will it happen from the outside? Kind of like Bitcoin try to nudge the financial district or like the financial industry a bit? I, I, I think that the music industry doesn't, it, it, it's, it's an established industry. It, it does what it, what, what it has done for quite some time. And, and to I, I think that change needs to come from the outside. And, and when that pressure to change is, is big enough, then change will happen. I don't think it will happen before that. George, you want to add something about no, that? No, I mean, that's innovative dilemma, right? No, completely consistent. I mean, I agree completely. The other thing, and I wanted to mention, but you said it better than I did. So there's, a, there's this idea of the, the Lindy effect, right? Um, and if you know, like anti-fragile, right? Where it's, it's the longer something stays around, it stays around longer. And I think that we're getting closer with blockchain to sort of Lindy effect, where the, the institute system starts to sort of solidify and concretize, and then it becomes harder to pull them down. But, but yeah, absolutely sort of the innovators to limit disruption. That's what I'm trying to get at with my little graph. <coughs> so I think he did it better. Yes, better clip art. <laughs> For sure, or no clip art, right? <laughs> and, uh, how do you think this changes will the impact labels? Uh, labels, I don't think, it's, it's impossible to say, but my spontane, spontaneous reaction to that, is a spontaneous answer to that, spontaneous reaction, that sounds like spontaneous combustion or something like that. <laughs> uh, my my spontane, spontaneous answer to that is that labels will be affected less than other players in the, in the industry, because, because labels does a lot of other work than just taking a recording and, and distributing it. They do. They do, uh, what's the term, not R&D, help me out here. A&R. A&R, exactly. Uh, they invest a lot of money in that, promoting things, building new artists. They are the PR, they, they are the PR agent for, for everyone new up and coming. Yeah, so, and Spotify can just create fake artists if they need to. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I think that they will be, be impacted much less uh, the, than other parties in, in the industry. Like. I think that there, there, are, there are two other big actors. We, we have what's called DSPs, that the digital service providers. We have uh, societies, which is Gemma here, it's Tim in Sweden, it's BMI and ASCAP in the US. And then we have publishers, which has sort of a similar role to, to book publishers, but they do it for music instead. I think that the ones that will be most affected is probably the publishers, followed by, by the societies. The societies have a very, very crucial role in the system. I don't think that they will disappear, but they will, they will, they will need to change their role. Their, or rather, their role will change. Mm -hmm. uh, so Spotify was in two different places in uh, George's presentation. It was uh, from the outside looking in at the big players and now on top of the industry. What's yeah. kind of the biggest difference in the, in the view from those two positions? <laughs> Well, I've only been around for four years at Spotify, so, so, so it's uh, <laughs> difficult for me to say. But on the other hand, yeah, I was one of the first, fourth part of the company. And, uh, I think that the, the biggest change that I've seen is that things start to solidify. Uh, you are not the one coming from the outside anymore. Uh, and that also means that things solidify internally. It becomes more difficult to push a big change through the system. Uh, so, so you are establishing a, a way of working and a way to run your business. And if you want to improve that, it becomes gradually more difficult to do that. I think that's the biggest change that I've seen. And that was, uh, sorry, uh, I just want to add that that of course uh, leaves the space open for innovators if, if you solidify. Yes. You quickly showed the fourth uh, possibility, like Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and um, I maybe you know about the Wikidata project, trying to build a layer of data objects below all those pages on Wikipedia. No, I, I don't actually know, know uh, that one. 
But in general, uh, would you consider this as a solution that if it catches up fast enough, it could kind of um, prohibit other um, like governor or, or dictatorship players to establish? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure I, I, I got the question. Could so if a kind of Wikipedia platform decides to build up a song artist, uh, song object, whatever mm -hmm. database, mm -hmm. a kind of community-driven observed version, would you think this is viable or not? Uh, the, the problem with that is that, like I said, the, the information, the, 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 the information about the rights related to music is sitting behind closed doors in various places. Uh, it, it can be, you can, it could have someone that, that collects this information in, in an open way. Mm. Yes, the problem there is that it needs to have a level of authoritativeness, can you say that, uh, to it, to, to, to make uh, industry players accept it. And it's not, it's not static data, this is data that is shifting all the time. And there's a lot of work done by the society, Gemma for example, to, to try to get this information right. So just saying we should collect this in one database and, and then we are done, it, it doesn't really work that way. So you could, you could come a distance by, by doing that, but I don't think you will get all the way. Any other questions? We'll take another quick break. Thank you so much.